If you've been watching the channel for long, you probably know how I feel about farming. I mean, back in 2014, I called this stuff boring upgrade systems, but now it's getting to a point where a lot of action genre games I've recently played full on have you farming for upgrade materials, and that process has only gotten more boring. I find there to be this dimension of contradiction to it all. Like, the games are having the player betray their own fantasy, like they're more about playing as a bean-counting accountant rather than a jaunty, foolhardy hero on a rollicking action adventure. Half the time, the crafting recipes don't even make sense, so now we're living in a world where I'm playing a Zelda game where I have to make sure I have enough of a particular kind of flower petal to make my t-shirt get harder. I don't get it. A fan of Let It Die once tried to explain to me how much easier the farming for upgrades gets if you just follow this fan-made color-coded Excel spreadsheets of spawn rates and cross-reference them against a real-time level rotation schedule, and I really don't get that either. So I'm actually quite surprised by how much I was able to appreciate Slime Rancher for what it is, because the whole thing is, literally, a farming game. Once I saw what was going on behind the curtains, I was expecting to dread the rest of my time with it, but that didn't happen. At least with Slime Rancher, you don't have any pretensions of action-adventure that it can betray. The boring part of the game is right there in the name. You ranch slimes. They're not really having you act out a character when you're collecting X amount of slimes based on spreadsheets and math, because you're a slime rancher. So kudos for that. In fact, all things considered, slime rancher's okay. I just don't know how much better than okay it really is. Slime Rancher is a game of entrepreneurial hardiness. It's a game of placid countryside life, living by the salt of the earth and all that crap. You play a cute girl who bought a cute ranch on a cute planet with a dark secret. An all-consuming, ravenous infestation of hunger is slowly decaying the world and covering it with, uh, with slime. Slime that's less in the Nickelodeon sense of the word and more the Dragon Quest sense of the word. Bouncing, slippery, slimy, smiling slimes pour into the world by the tens, sometimes maybe even hundreds, as you walk through their enormous spawn radiuses. When a slime eats food, it produces a valuable interplanetary trade commodity called a plort. Who buys this crap? The chute next door to your house. You just set the vacuum to blow and spew it all down the hole. You feed slimes, you corral them, you coddle them, play with them, and treat them real well in clean, spacious living conditions to steadily sell more and more expensive crossbreeds of plort as the cost of living increases and the prices of your old plort decreases. The game design driving this struggle is the good ol' or dread it all if you're me, farming grind. The whole game's upgrade tree operates off a real traditional Skinner box of repetitive clicking. If you've played Candy Box, Cookie Clicker, or hell, I guess even No Man's Sky counts too, then you already have experience with the same school of economics that Slime Rancher is distributing the wealth with. It's operating on the hope that rewarding the same exact actions with steadily more delicious looking treats over time will condition players into playing longer. And to the game's credit, that mostly worked on me. I sat down for my first session, just kind of experimented a bit, explored a bit, sold my first few plorts, and then I looked back at the clock and suddenly six hours had passed and I had forgotten to eat food. I can't say I was bouncing off the walls with fun during those long sessions, but the game definitely triggered some kind of trance. If my experience has anything to go by, the game's at least good at being addictive. And I think one of the ways it hooked me is something other grinding games can't really replicate, which is that Slime Rancher is unique because it's almost a manic FPS. You are constantly scrambling to make precision snap mouse movements at a breakneck pace. It's probably the most chaotic and fast-paced non-violent FPS I've played. Every repetition of the supply runs you make out in the wild to gather new food and new slimes is a real contest against Mother Nature to see if you can gobble up its precious resources before the wild slimes do. Add in a sprint button and a hold button jetpack and suddenly the game's hours-long loop of getting rich slowly gets chopped up into milliseconds of you having to decide which part of an incline you should mash the spacebar at to give you the biggest jump boost. And another reason why that's compelling actually lies beyond the Skinner box. There's a surprisingly large and surprisingly fleshed out overworld map outside of your farm. Complete with locked doors and treasure chests hidden away by ability-gated obstacles that give the overworld an almost Metroidvania feel. I can safely say that it was actually the curiosity of seeing what else was out there that was really driving me forwards. 
That curiosity was only intensified by having to do so much clicking to stay financially afloat on the way there. But further feeding you along is a story. Slime Ranchers got a cast of five or six weirdos asking you for favors, but the real story is told by just two characters. One character is just some emails coming into your inbox. The other character is just diary notes a stranger left behind. It's a story about weighing passion against stability for the sake of finding a routine in life that works for you. And while you're figuring out what routine works for you, maybe you can take a few hints and not fall into the same pitfalls I did. Slime Rancher is far from an excellent game. It's really got ankle-deep farming mechanics compared to the Harvest Moon offshoots it's competing against, but the big thing I ended up caring about, which was exploration, was still a chore to work through. So if you decide by the end of the review that you still want to check out Slime Rancher, I have two tips for you. Number one, that's terror. The first third of Slime Rancher's progression curve plays by the clicker's books. Every supply run you make, every new slime you create is rewarded with an ample boost in abilities, income, workspace, gadgets to play with, story letters coming in, until about hour six going on seven when suddenly the pacing just stopped in his tracks. It seemed like once I had two pens of fat money maker slimes bred together and smoothly pushing out plorts, I was making more money than I was ever going to need. And this is why I said earlier that the game's actual farming mechanics are ankle deep. You can't breed the traits of a third parent into your livestock's genes, which ultimately limits the amount of slimes hopping around both the overworld and in your own ranch. You don't really breed slimes so much as you just kind of duct tape two of them together and they don't come up with new traits in that process. They just save you space and plort out the same old plorts twice as fast. You can only place your gadgets, your gardens, your corrals on predetermined locations. Without the flexibility afforded by pixels or bloxels, your own ranch building customization efforts are very limited as well. And thus, during my playthrough, the upgrade list bottomed out quickly. There was nothing left to spend money on just a few hours into the game, and yet I could still tell there was a lot of overworld left to explore and a lot of slimes I hadn't encountered. So there were a good five, six hours of incredibly slow gameplay of me continuing to make damn good money, but I was only just barely breaching into new areas, very slowly discovering what content I was missing by kind of spacebar climbing and exploiting the jetpack. Turns out I was just waiting way too damn long to shell out the big bucks for this science lab expansion. That's your mid-game ability gate. Minutes after the purchase, things got back into gear again. So my advice to you is deal with the game's progression curve plateau by buying the real expensive ranch upgrades earlier than I was willing to. Turns out there's actually not that much to do out there if you don't just keep spending money. Number two, that's terror. Slime Rancher's greatest sin is, well, I think that really there's, there's two issues here at the top of my list. The first is that there's no map screen of any kind. Although I like the concept of combining a farming game with the Metroidvania style overworld and would like to play other games of this vein, the world in Slime Rancher oftentimes feels big just for the sake of being big. Important door portals and landmarks feel like they're laid out randomly. There's a lot of winding, looping, spiraling, interconnected tunnels with copy-pasted assets and high walls blocking your visibility. It doesn't have the kind of visually unique layout to every single turn like a Dark Souls does, and Dark Souls gets away without having a map beautifully. Some games need more of a map, some games need less of a map, Slime Rancher needs at least a damn compass. You can't tell which way is which over here, and you gotta go over here tons of times because the game's so repetitive. The second big issue struggling at the top of my shit list here is that your inventory never expands beyond four slots. Don't look at the water slot, that one doesn't count. Anyway, with the game's most vital resources being slimes, their plorts, and the three kinds of food they eat, you're not likely to ever have enough inventory space to make a real satisfying haul to bring home. Later in the game, I was noticing that I was oftentimes going on expeditions with specific goals in mind that required a full inventory before leaving meaning a lot of the cool stuff I saw out there just had to get left behind. And it got to a point where having only four slots felt more like punishment for existing rather than a simple way to keep things tense. Making hard decisions about what to bring back home ended up becoming more like begrudgingly dealing with a hard fact of life. Because yes, it turns out that four tiny jars of dirt for science experiments were more important than the 30 chickens and 50 carrots I could bring back home to feed my family. So my advice to you is think Portably? You can sit and wait for food to grow while batting away wild slimes if you have to. 
It's the walking back and forth that takes forever, which is actually another issue of the level design. So if you have to solve a problem out in the field that needs an inventory slot, clean out a slot and make a portable stash and come back for it when you're done. You only need just enough stuff to seed it growing back home, because remember, one pen full of fat money makers earns you more money than you'll ever spend. And that's Slime Rancher, a beautifully simple and sadistically cute game about placid country life as filtered through the chaos of a manic FPS. The game is far from excellent. It's, uh, by my measures, it's, uh, probably just on the higher end of being only okay. For starters, it's a hell of a lot of repetition of a game that's never really deep or complex. But the first six hours of the 16 are gonna be good, clean, simple fun. Slime Rancher doesn't take itself seriously, so maybe you shouldn't take it seriously. I would recommend picking it up on sale if you're into these sorts of games or curious to see how Harvest Moon would work as an FPS. Just make sure it's not the only game in that pile. You're probably going to have fun starting it, but you're probably not going to want to finish it. 